No people will be better than there too. Can we clap for my Thank you very much. When I was asked by your principal, who is a brother, to come and deliver a lecture at Milton Magai, I did not have a choice. So I want you to know that I did not firstly have a choice. Because when the brother asks, you have to do it. Not so? When he chose the topic, what happened? I did not have a choice. Not so? And when he chose the time, I also did not have a choice. And that is why I'm apologizing to you that I was 15 minutes late. Because I had to fit in. Mr. Chairman, my brother, the principal of the Milti Magai Technical University. I want you all to give yourself a round of applause at that name. Milti Magai Technical University. It was a journey, not so? But you are here now, not so? Clap for yourselves. So the first principal and vice chancellor, the faculty, staff, and administrators of this great university, students, alumni, distinguished members of the public who are here today to listen to this lecture, I bring you warm greetings from the Anti-Corruption Commission of Sierra Leone. We are going to have a conversation today on a topic that is there to all of us, particularly at a time when what has been happening with education in Sierra Leone has taken center stage with respect to the destiny of the country, where we are and where we want to see ourselves, and how this is threatened by what they call the dominion effect. Yay, dominion, yay. Yay, dominion, yay. <laughs> Therefore, the topic for today's lecture is sanitization of the dominion effect. Retracing the attempts of West Africa to unleash Sierra Leone's development aspirations. Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the late President Nancy Mandela once defined education as the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. In the words of the U.S. civil rights activist, Malcolm X, education is the passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. So if you want to enter into the future, and more particularly the 21st century, your passport is your education. The former president of the United States of America, Barack Obama, would say, in a global economy where the most valuable skill you can sell is your knowledge, a good education is no longer just a pathway to opportunity, it is a prerequisite for it. This is not just a pathway to opportunity, it is a prerequisite for it. Mr. Chairman, the advanced natures of the world have since the beginning of their advancement put premium education. It has been the greatest engine of development, as Mandela did say. So, in Athenian philosophy, Plato, for example, refers to philosopher kings, people with knowledge and the highest form of education and intellect, who will be made to govern. That is what he said. Make philosophers king. 
and then everything will work. I know you academics, there is always criticisms and conversations around this, and a lot has happened since, but the centrality of all of this is that for a long time people realize that men of knowledge should lead, and knowledge should be central to development, to progress, and to growth. During ancient Greece, the mighty and wealthy of the world sent their children to Athens for education in philosophy, economics, and other disciplines like architecture. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, the Athenian ideals was that of the Kalos Kagatos. <laughs> the Kalos Kagatos means the wise and good. The wise and good. The teachers were as much preoccupied with overseeing a child's good conduct and the formation of, the, of his character as with directing his progress in various taught him. In the 19th century, Sierra Leone used to occupy such an enviable position as the center for training of teachers, doctors, administrators for the whole of British West Africa. Somebody made reference to that here. Just yesterday, somebody was telling me that I think is the president or prime minister of Lebanon went to both school here. And everywhere I have gone in Africa, when you mention your name, the first thing they do is to identify you with where Sierra Leone was academically just about decades ago. So, institutions like the Sierra Leone Grammar School, the Annie Walsh Memorial School, the Frabe College, Jala University, Missing Magai Teachers College, etc., etc., have provided knowledge for the people of Africa to as far away as Botswana, Kenya, Lesotho, and near as Nigeria and Ghana. The first Prime Minister of Nigeria, Namdi Ezekiwe, went to Frabe College. You already know that, not so? A lot of people who led the liberation struggle of Africa went to school here. So, this rosy picture of Sierra Leone, which we all are proud of, rooted in history, and founded on, on Athenian philosophy of the Kalos Kagatos, the wise and good, is what we all aspire for, not so? You are here, Mr. Magai, because you want to form part of the wise and good. There is no two way about it. Whether you are faculty or student, you want to be in that class that is wise and good. You also want to be in the class that Plato referred to as the philosopher kings. We humans, we are called the homo sapiens, not so? And do you know what the homo sapiens means? The homo sapiens means the wise man. The wise man. So we are here in search of knowledge, education. Degrees are a measure of knowledge. However, during the 70s and 80s, bad governance crept in. We are going to tell ourselves certain truths here today. So be prepared for it. Bad governance kept in, corruption real is ugly head in academia, and the long process of erosion of the gains and reputation of the educational sector in Sierra Leone commenced. The mega public funds provided for public services like education were at the same time stolen and embezzled by officials of corrupt regimes over time. 
Our educational institutions then started to experience the problem we all know today. Lack of trained and qualified teachers, lack of educational facilities to accommodate the educational needs of a growing population, overcrowding in classrooms, lack of educational and learning materials, low wages of teachers and lecturers, and administrators, and more generally, the educational system got caught up in a system of bribery, corruption, and patronage. Then the civil war started in the early 90s, causing the deaths of thousands of innocent citizens and a near collapse of the state. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission report later singled out endemic corruption and bad governance as part of the major reasons for the civil war. For most emerging economies, one of the common denominators of their underdevelopment is high illiteracy rate, and Sierra Leone has plenty of it. According to UNESCO, our educational rate per the population is at 48.1%. 58.7% for men and 37.7% of women aged 15 and above. No country will prosper with this kind of unfavorable data. You cannot have more illiterate people than literate people and you want to prosper. You cannot have more illiterate population than literate population and prosper. Which means this has to change. The most recent United Nations Human Development Index places the country amongst the bottom 10 worst of countries. We are at what seems to be a point of no return. The institutions of higher learning, as their lower counterparts, remain decayed and dilapidated. You must thank God for the gentleman, Philip Cannon, who is trying to clean the decay of the former Mitimagai Teachers College, and now we are having a university that has a good facelift. The decay in the educational system, the buildings, the structures, the syllabus, the syllabuses, everything was decayed. There is lack of adequate and proper facilities that would be useful to students in their chosen disciplines. You are doing chemistry and you do not have materials to carry out experiment. Is that chemistry? <laughs> Some people go to school, our schools, our secondary schools, students are doing all these tests. They don't even do practical until they graduate. Physics, chemistry. And we are building an educational system that is supposed to provide for the 21st century. So, there is a lack of adequate and proper facilities that will be useful to students in their chosen disciplines. The available faculties and disciplines remain few and mostly unprogressive. Most teachers or lecturers do not necessarily teach students well enough. And they examine them with the objective that the bulk of them must fail. <laughs> Our teachers examine students so that the bulk of them must fail. That is what they do. There is little incentive to attract qualified teachers to help raise the standard of the faculties. The syllabuses do not reflect the educational and job demands of the 21st century. The level of political interference in admission of students and the recruitment of staff remains scandalous. The administrations of the respective schools and universities seem to have lost control of properly managing and disciplining their staff and students. And above all, majority of students are awarded lower class degrees that inhibit their ability to be awarded serious scholarships of gain or gain admissions in world-class universities. The result is that the education is heading towards the graves and we have lost Athens. We lost Athens. 
There was a deep sigh of hope when a few years ago the government recognized the crumbling educational system and established a commission to investigate the reasons behind the poor educational output and offer recommendations to ameliorate the system. We all remember the Gbamanja Commission, not so? Which was to review the 634 system and offer recommendations. As will be reasonably expected among these many findings, the commission highlighted poor quality teachers, the lack of textbooks, school fees, overcrowding in classroom, lack of parental supervision, unprepared students taking the Becker and Watts exam, and above all, corruption in the school system to be the reasons behind the decline. So we knew the problem. This to many was a mere painful elaboration of the obvious. However, instead of properly implementing solutions to ameliorate the poor state of affairs, the government simply added another year of senior schooling, making the system a 6344 timeline, a hook, line, and sinker acceptance of the Government Commission. That, with utmost respect, was an error of judgment, but thankfully it has been corrected, and the 6344 system was replaced, and the 63. 6334 was reintroduced as a system of education, with emphasis being placed on formation instead. The government before now needed to invest in free fundamental education for all children and improve the quality of, education, of existing educational systems. When students fail and mass, or the educational system is organized so as to fail students rather than ensure that they passed, at least in the majority, the educational system itself will be a failure. What, for example, recently happened? The Sierra Leone Law School, for example, would give exams and you have 70% of the students failing. It's not an indictment to the students. It's an indictment on the institution that formed them, starting from the university up to the law school. I am not saying that educational systems must be organized so that undeserving people pass. What I am saying is that educational systems must be structured to make sure that the right people are admitted, but they are formed sufficiently for them to be able to graduate at least in the majority. But when an educational system is built in such a way that there are more failures than successes, that educational system is problematic and should be reviewed. But going beyond these fundamental challenges of the educational system, we have a new challenge. Mr. Chairman, Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret that our educational system has, in the last decade, been confronted with new, unprecedented challenges. That is the challenge of examination by practice, fake degrees, and honorary titles. <laughs> examination by practice based on our findings often takes place in communities, private homes, worst of all, the places we call schools and educational system. When I came, went to the Anti-Corruption Commission, I never, ever imagined that I was going there as commissioner to be doing anything about education in terms of examination and practice. However, the decadence that we saw, the organized system where you have those who are supposed to protect the educational system, instead are the ones facilitating cheating Malpractices, taking money from schools, parents organizing themselves six months before, organizing, collecting money, principals calling meetings and telling the parents if you want your child to pass, you must bring 1.5 million euros. If not, it's not going to happen. And what is that money for? To pay and bribe the marshals and supervisors in the exams hall. So those principals, and teachers 
can provide their offices and homes for those who comply to be taken to those homes and when they get there they are waiting for powerful mathematics professors and English lecturers <laughs> who have been paid in advance to merely sit down there and dictate to them question one A, question two B, question three C, question C, B, question three star. educational system is that <laughs> I want you to turn to somebody close to you and ask him of her how did we get here You see, we can all see the danger of this, not so? Now, there was a school, there was a school where when they go for exam, the teachers pass around a basket like they are collection, collection money. <laughs> and the pupils put in 50, 50,000 euros. Once they put in the 50, 50,000 loans, the teachers pretend that they do not know that all the students have mobile phones. And in those mobile phones, there are now professors and lecturers sitting somewhere who are answering the chemistry and physics questions and feeding it in that mobile phone for every student to write. Recently, we went to a school. It was in the proprietor of the school's house that the students were taken from the examination center, taken to his house in his parlor. And there was a Jalai University student waiting there to answer the questions for them. And we met them taking the exam. Mathematics. Mathematics. Imagine that student is going to get A1 and come. But the unfairness is to those who did not have that done for them. Your children who will study hard, but maybe they don't have the capacity to get A1, but they could get C and B. They are going to be measured in comparison to these people who have gone and some mathematics professor, English professor, has answered the questions for them and they get A1. And we all think that the other ones are stupid. These are the brilliant students. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that is what examination malpractice has done to this country. You something in 2019 when the worst exam was being taken in Kono, the entire Kono district did not have a single mobile phone that is considered to be have the capacity for WhatsApp on the market. The students bought all of it. Powerful mobile phones were bought from the market in Kono one day before the English language exam <laughs> by students and their parents who were preparing for massive examination malpractice. As God will have it, we figured out before then and we thwarted everything. That was the year not a single student passed in the entire Kono district. <laughs> The educational stakeholders in the Kono district, professors, doctors, they organized themselves, they came to the ACC to tell me thank you. That they have realized how serious this was. There was no single, there was no cell phone that had the capacity to download WhatsApp that was on the market in Kono. Things are that dangerous. And then, 
Why is we are dealing with that? Because as you can see, we have been taking a lot of action in respect of that. Not so. We have been chasing them in their strongholds. We have been arresting. We have been detaining. We have been prosecuting. We have been doing what we can. We even changed the law to make imprisonment to five years imprisonment. If you are caught in preparing and organizing examination malpractice to access universities. But why is we are doing that? Yeah, Dominio, yeah. We all woke up one morning. We all woke up one morning. And there was a new issue of fake degrees. Recently, we all saw on social media when an individual with a fake professional title was conferring fake honorary PhD degrees on a number of fully grown men and women. Planned in beautiful academic regalia under a mango tree. When I saw the videos, when I saw the videos, I thought it was just one of these clippers from a Nigerian movie. I didn't believe that you have fully grown men who dress up, follow one fraudster to confer degrees on them. And they are ready and are proud to call themselves doctor after that. I couldn't believe, I thought it was a Nigerian movie. Later, through the Tertiary Education Commission, we found out that they have been chasing them and even advised them not to proceed with the ceremony. And that is why they were desperate enough to do it under a mango tree. We clearly know that was why on the 19th April 2022, the commission issued out a press release. And again, I need to clarify this. We did not say the ACC has no business with degrees, with fake degrees. We did not say we are not interested in investigating. If you go back to our press release, we are very clear. We said there are institutions that have primary responsibility for things like this. The Tertiary Education Commission is there. The Public Service Commission is there. The Human Resource Office HRMO is there. The Public Service Commission is there. We have the Ministry of Higher and Technical Education. Where are all of them when these things happened? Why didn't they take the lead? Why shouldn't they take the lead now? Why should it be about ACC all the time? How many personnel do we have? 205 staff for the entire country. We already are overwhelmed by the high level of corruption in the country. We are battling on all fronts. And you want us to be the ones again to verify the degree of every person in this country? We said let them take the lead. And we will support them to do it. We even set up a tax force in the Anti-Corruption Commission to provide support. And we have started doing cleanup in areas because our mandate is not as wide as most people think. We are limited to the fact that it can only be corruption where it confers an advantage on the person within the framework of the public service. So, if Dr. Philip Kanu we are not Dr. Philip Kano, he we are just Mr. Philip Kano. And he's made the principal of Mitimagai College of Education. Or now the Mitimagai Technical University. And then, for some reason, he sees the need to get a PhD. And he confers a PhD on himself, whether merited or unmerited. The ACC is limited because that PhD was not a factor in the making of Dr. Philip Kanu, the head and principal of Mithmagai Technical University. Do we understand? 
if it were a factor, so for example, if they wanted, the president wanted to appoint the vice chancellor of the university and they ask him, bring your degrees, and he includes a fake PhD there, and then he is appointed, clearly the ACC has jurisdiction. Because then an advantage has been conferred on him by reason of that PhD. So the law can be technical. What people think can be different. And we have to work within the law. And I've always told people, one thing I don't ever want to do is to abuse my own powers. Because it means I'm a hypocrite. So, we are working on all of this. We have set up a tax force. We are reviewing the degrees. We have accountability clubs in the schools to help with integrity issues. We have provided support to academic institutions to make them be better. We have done systems and processes review so that their systems can work better. Not so at Miti Maga here, we did one year, not so. To check, we have done at Jala University. We have done at the University of Sierra Leone to help them develop systems of integrity. Most importantly, the government itself has seen the importance of education. It has seen the need to develop more wise people. The need to ensure that we have a critical mass of educated people. And the new direction government has therefore invested massively in education. Over 30% of our budget now goes to education. The government has also upgraded a number of polytechnics and colleges to universities. I am standing in one of them right now. Not so? Yes. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, all these planned and conscious efforts by the government, not only to develop the human capital of this country, but also to sensitize the country's ailing education sector to enable us to retrace the attempts of West Africa. All the efforts, the fight against corruption, the anti-corruption commission going after examination malpractice, the government investing in corruption in education, technical institutions being upgraded to universities, and of course, all of us doing what we can is there for us to retrace our steps, to move back and see if we can get back to where we were. So, I call on all of us to take advantage of this renewed interest in education by the actors in politics and governance. Because, as they say, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it from you. Not so. You professors, not so. Can somebody take your learning from you? No. They can imprison you. They can arrest you. They can tear your certificate. But what is here only goes with you to the grave. Except you prefer to transfer it as you beautiful, hardworking faculty are doing. Educating the next generation of leaders by transferring knowledge to them. Dominion literally means dominance. Dominion means dominance. But we cannot and we not sit by and allow the ye dominion ye kind of education to dominate our educational system. That is why the ACC continues to clamp down on cases of academic fraud and malpractice from schools all the way to universities. We want to see our young people learn and acquire skills from established, accredited, and recognize institutions because we know what this means for not just their own personal development but for the development of the nation we have an obligation to keep that process clean and free from dishonesty renowned author and management scientist Todd Henry acknowledges this when he once said acquiring new skills and adapting to complex uncertain environment isn't easy it requires persistent attention and near constant effort to maintain a trajectory of growth. As it is easy 
to grow tired or lose your drive. However, when you stop growing, you start dying. When you stop learning, you start dying. In, in as much as the same way that an organization needs to be consistently innovative in order to maintain market share, individuals must make a personal commitment to lifelong personal innovation through skills development, education, risk taking, experiment in order to avoid stagnation. The seeds of tomorrow's brilliance are planted in the soils of today's activities. The seeds of tomorrow's brilliance are planted in the soils of today's activity. What we do today for Sierra Leone will determine how well we all are. As we know today, we have all kinds of economists. But our economy is a problem. We have doctors. But people are going to India. They are going to Ghana. They are finding everywhere else to run to when they have medical conditions. We have lawyers, but people sometimes prefer to settle their problems because they don't want to have anything to do with lawyers. It is a loss of faith in our professional cater. When the people are grumbling, they ground dry. When the people are saying times are hard, they are basically saying our economies have failed us. Our leaders have failed us. So you, the students here today, this is a challenge to you. There is a void to fill. All of you should be economists that people should rely on. You should be educational professionals that people should rely on. You should be a one-man statement of change that Sierra Leone needs. You should be an example that people can look at and say, this is a Carlos Cagatos. He's a wise man. Let us use the knowledge that we are getting here to change the story of Sierra Leone. We have to desanitize Sierra Leone of the dominion effect. You do not have to be PhD to succeed in life. You do not have to be PhD to lecture. You do not have to be a PhD to be a great professor. You do not need to have a PhD to be a great professional. Just make sure that what you have, you merit it and you use it well. People will respect you. People will appreciate you. And people will rely on you. Mr. Chairman, I will conclude by thanking those who organized this lecture, from the principal, administrators, and staff, to the students, for inviting me to speak on this topic that is very topical, as the principal said. <laughs> One thing is sure. You all understand that corruption in education is a common danger in our lifetime. You all understand that it must be eliminated. With hope and virtue, let us brave the rains, the suns, and endure what storms may come. But we must fight the dominion effect. So that our children and grandchildren shall know that when we were tested, we refuse to let the dishonest dominate us. That we did not turn our backs, nor did we falter in our decision to stand against dishonesty. We shall carry forth the fight for the future generations. For it is only when there is said to be quality in free education drive of the president and people of Sierra Leone that we can set ourselves firmly to enter 
and dominate the 21st century as a country of great people. I thank you all for your audience. <laughs>